Hey everybody, it's Jay Janess with the Slashy Mini Network and I get a nice little uh, recent pickups video for you. Um, I know it's been a long time since my last video and I would like to apologize. I've just been playing a little bit of catch up here. But the first thing I'd like to show you is Super Mario 3D Land. My girlfriend actually bought this for herself and I haven't played it myself. But I've, I've seen her play it, and it actually looks like a fun little game. It definitely differentiates itself from uh, any of the other Mario side-scrollers, because this is more of a 3D layout. Now, it can be played in 2D, but from what I've heard, a lot of the uh, gameplay gets a little bit of help from the 3D uh, aspect of the 3DS. And... I actually can't wait to try this out myself. And the next one I have for you is Super Mario, New Super Mario Brothers 2. Uh, it's a sequel to the um, DS and or the Super Mario Brothers for the Wii. Now this is basically a typical side scroller and the one thing that I found strange about this game is it actually keeps track of how many coins you've collected throughout the game. Now, I don't know what it leads to if you collect, I want to say it's a million coins, but don't quote me on that. But I'd like to actually see what happens when you complete the game with all million coins. Uh, maybe you open up some new worlds or what have you. But yeah, this one I have played and I like it a lot. It's a nice little uh, side scroll. Now this one, uh, people call it an overhyped game, some people call it one of the greatest games to ever exist, and that would be The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. But in this case, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina, Ocarina of Time 3D. Now, I don't think any of the uh, 3D takes away or really gives much of anything to the game itself but overall in in my heart it, it's definitely one of the greatest games but I'm not trying to overhype it or anything but it, it's a fun game and the story is really awesome and what a remake well not so much a remake but more of a remaster it, it's it's essentially the same exact game but with a new skin all on it and being presented in widescreen. Now the touch screen definitely adds a little bit of ease to it because if you set up your items just right and more often than not you, you're going to want to put uh, your hover boots and or your uh, metal boots on either section one or section two instead of having it dedicated to one of the buttons because that that's where you want to put your bombs or your arrows or any other projectile but yeah some of the little touch screen tidbits they, they definitely make the system a bit easier to run now here is a game that I've been really excited for and that's the yeah the Legend of Zelda my fault this is definitely the last thing from The Legend of Zelda. It's Kingdom Hearts 3D Dream Drop Distance. Uh, I have yet to get into this game, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. Uh, I heard the, the drop system is really neat and at times can be a little bit frustrating because when, you, when your dream meter drops, you could be in the middle of a really hectic boss fight and once you switch over to one character and their dream meter runs out, you get back into the last game that you were in, for example, which is that boss fight, and just from out of nowhere, he could hand your butt to you. But yeah, I definitely can't wait to play this. I'm, I was really excited. I kind of wish I got the Mark of Mastery edition, but either way, I, get, I got one of the greatest games for the 3DS. Uh, next up is some PS3 games. Uh, first I'll start off with The Lord of the Rings War in the North. Uh, this is another one of those games where it doesn't tie directly into the movies, but it's more of a side story. 
Now, people call it an RPG. Some people call it an action RPG. But from what I've played, it, it it's more so a beat 'em up with RPG elements. Uh, you you just got wave after wave of enemies coming at you, and you're just swinging away. Uh, you can play either a dwarf, you can play a ranger, or you can play an elf. And it it. It's it's an okay game. I I was just kind of expecting a little bit more out of it, especially with the way it was advertised and the way I heard people talking about it being an RPG. Now, like I said, I I I definitely throw this more akin to a beat 'em up with RPG elements, but it's it's a good game overall. I enjoyed it. Now, next up we have. I'll just throw both of them, both of them at you. We have uh, two games from the Uncharted series. We have Uncharted: Drake's Fortune, and Uncharted Two: Among Thieves. This I have yet to play, but I I definitely heard it's one of the better games in the series. Uh, it, it got a lot of praise, and it wasn't overhyped or anything, but the hype that it did receive, it was well deserved. At least from what I heard. I have like I said, I haven't played it myself. But this one I have played. And I enjoyed it a lot. It it, it definitely had that Indiana Jones esque adventure going on, you know? And the shooting mechanics were really good. Um there wasn't really much of any stealth going on in the game. It was definitely filled with a lot of puzzles which weren't too which weren't too hard, but there, there definitely were a few that were, that seemed, I don't know, seemed a little out of place to me. And then here we have another Kingdom Hearts game, Kingdom Hearts 1.5 HD Remix. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with uh, the Final Mix games, this is actually what you, that's actually what you get. Uh, you 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 get the games that were from Japan after they released in America. Um, now, to let you all in on something, uh, the version that we get, they tend to have a little bit more than what the original Japanese release had. But when they released it over here in America, they started work on what they call the Final Mix games. And these Final Mix games contain all that was released in the original U.S. version. But there's a little bit more that they add here and there for the uh, Japanese Final Mix. And this is actually what we got here, a full translation of the Final Mix games. Now, the only other game that's not really a Final Mix, um, it was entitled Kingdom Hearts Re. Okay, my fault. I, I guess you could say it was definitely a remix. But the Kingdom Hearts Re Chain of Memories that we get in this was actually the original U.S. release from when it was a remake from the GBA. And also it contains about three and a half hours of cinematic footage from Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days. And I enjoyed the game a little bit, but the thing that really kills me is the consistency in which they do the ice cream scenes. Oh my god, are there so many. But either way, the most most people are going to end up buying this game for the final mix of the original Kingdom Hearts. And I, I, I definitely enjoyed of what I've played so far. Maybe one day I'll get to a review to this. So I won't give too much more away. But yeah, Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 Remix is definitely a great game. For any PS3 owner that hasn't really played this, played with the series at all, or for those that do want to experience the Final Mix versions, get this. You can get it on the cheap for about 40 bucks. Now here we have another Lord of the Rings game, but for the PS2, 
we have Lord of the Rings, the Third Age. Now, this is a side story, just like um, War in the North, but the Third Age, it, it, it ties more into the movie than anything. But if I remember correctly, there's some things in this game that were held back because EA didn't actually have the license to use a lot of the movie stuff. Well, my fault. Not not the movie stuff. I don't know. Things from the book. But the funny thing I find here is right on the back it says the most exciting RPG since Final Fantasy. Now, that's a very hard claim. But excluding that, uh, the gameplay on this is your normal turn-based RPG. But it's sort of got the... CTB or conditional time battle system from Final Fantasy X where you where certain actions will dictate who goes f next for your turns um just like Final Fantasy X you can switch in and out your characters in the heat of battle and I enjoyed this game I mean I'm I'm still playing it as I speak but not really as you can see I'm giving you guys yeah whatever anyway for those of you that haven't played this, I definitely say pick it up. Um, also, if you if you're a fan of Final Fantasy or or you're a fan of uh, the Lord of the Rings, this is definitely highly suggested. Now, the next one I have it's actually for a system that I do not own at the moment. Uh, it's for the Wii U. We have the Legend of Zelda: The Wind Waker HD. Now, like I said, I have I have yet to receive the system, but I plan on getting it within the next few months or so. So I'll be able to get a chance to re-experience this. I had it on the GameCube, but something happened and I, I lost the game or whatever. And I've been searching up and down for a copy of The Wind Waker, but... The used copies, they just go for so much. I understand that it's a Nintendo product and it's a great game, but they almost have a rarity price to it. And like I said, I understand Nintendo games holding their uh, value, but some of the prices that I see online, 30 40 50 60 dollars for a copy of the original GameCube version, it's just insane. And a lot of these, they're, they're just the disc. And it's just mind-boggling. I don't understand why they overpriced some games like that. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah. Like I said, I don't have much to say about this game. Because I haven't actually played it. But if it's anything like the original, it's definitely going to be something that I enjoy. The one aspect that I do like about it is... Uh, there's a special sale that you can receive in the game that speeds you up and... It's not, uh, it's not like the original sale from the game where you just basically coast it. With this new sale, you don't even have to direct the wind in any particular direction, as far as I've heard. So that's definitely a nice addition. And your Tingle Tuner, of course, that's going to more than likely be on your gamepad for the uh, system for the game. So that'll be nice. Now. Before I show you guys, I have two items of the same item. And it's gotten a lot of flack, it's gotten a lot of hate, and it, I'm going to give you guys a little hint. People were saying, Nintendo, why would you do this? And in a sense, I'm a reason as to why they did this. And not just for the children, because another hint... It looks like a little play school toy. And I'll show you right now. The Nintendo 2DS. As you see, I actually have two colors. I got the blue and I got the red. The red is my girlfriend's and the blue is actually mine. Now, I was very, I was very sketchy when I first got the system because I did hold a used copy of I did you I did I 
was able to get a chance to hold the used um, system. And at first, it, it felt really, really, really good. And I decided right off of that, I'll decide and pick one up and grab one for my girlfriend. And you know what? I'm very pleased with it. I mean, the form factor... I mean, I'm, I don't have large hands, but I don't have small hands either. I'm, I'm, I've got medium build hands, and the system actually fits really nice in my hand. And I just actually completed the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D on it. And I don't find my hands getting cramped. I don't, I don't find them hurting or anything. The corners, they're nice and rounded, and they've... It fits nice in the palm of my hand. I mean, I really can't say any more good things about this. I mean, it, it really is an awesome system. If, if you're on the cheap and you can't actually afford the original 3DS or the 3DS XL, the 2DS is not just good for kids. It's actually pretty good for adults, you know? The, so, the shoulder buttons are nice and solid. The D-pad... Uh, in my opinion, the D-pad is a little squishy, but I did play New Super Mario Bros. 2 on my girlfriend's 2DS using the D-pad, and it's actually not bad. It responds really well. I'm quite pleased with it. Uh, down here, you got your little sleeper button. Instead of uh, having to close the system for when certain games require you to close the system to sort of throw it into sleep mode and open it back up. That That's where the sleep switch comes in, and it's really good. Um, the other thing I noticed was, of course, we know that the 2DS can play um, original DS games. Now, on the 3DS and the 3DS XL, apparently you had to hold a combination of buttons to make the original DS games kind of blow up into the 3DS's screen so they're a little bit bigger. And I noticed that when I put my game in, everything is proper, so to speak. I mean, I don't, the only black bars that I have on the system are two black bars on the side on the top screen. So, I was, I was quite surprised that I didn't have to hold the start button and the A button, I believe it was, or the select start and A. But, yeah, anyway, it, it's a really good system. I mean, it, it, it's got the 3D cameras here and the front-facing camera, but I personally, I'm, I wasn't, I'm not a big fan of 3D, so it, it wasn't a loss. I mean, the only real loss to me was if I bought the game, bought the system, is if it didn't feel right in my hands. But of course, then I could have returned it, but it it's a nice little system. I like it. But yeah, I mean, if you're on the cheap, it's only 130 bucks, brand new. Uh, check it out. Um, do a little bit of research. Find out if it's a system that you're going to like. All right. Well... Name's Jason Janess, slash mini network. Everyone have yourself a good day. I'm out.